Ready to go. It's my nickname in high school, the Repulsor. The girls did not like me. They did not. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Space Rain Steve here at Hyperspace Hobbies. And I am here with my good friend, Ian. Good morning, my man. How are you today? You know what? I'm doing all right. I've had a coffee already. Yeah. I've kicked into the carbonated waters. Sure. Yeah, sure. Just nothing like stirring up that coffee with some bubbly water. Let's let's do it. Like, I, I like to live dangerously. Well, I know a way that even if you were trying to live dangerously, you might get some safety out of it. By liking and subscribing to Hyperspace Hobbies. And rocking and repulsor in your next game. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. If you've got any cool ideas on repulsors, make sure you jump down into the comment section. Put it down there. But let's, uh, let's, let's get this conversation rolling. The repulsor. We've been doing a bunch of these unit deep dives, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I love kind of, I really have loved that everybody is into this. And I also have loved like really taking some time to sift through the codex, find things that I maybe haven't used a lot and really thinking through like how I would put this on the table, even if my first inclination is, oh, it's not good enough. Yeah, we're kind of breaking that barrier. Yeah. We're saying we're not allowed to say it's not good enough. We want to figure out how to make it work. Exactly. And definitely cramming two heads into that one space and both of us thinking about how yeah. to make it work. You come up with things where I go, I never would have thought of that. And I'm sure vice versa, that's happening for you. That it totally is. And something that this little, like, uh, this series of videos, I guess, that we've been creating has really made me, like, want to see is everyone out there taking some time to flip through the pages of your book and actually thinking on how you can make something work. Do not just listen to, oh, well, this list, you know, won a tournament, and so these are the best things. No matter what, you can't make anything else work. That's not true. There's, a, there's so many things that can be so good but they do need to be played a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. And you need to find ways to make them the most effective that you that you uh, need them to be, or they and, can be. And one of those units is the Repulsor. Yeah, so the Repulsor uh, saw a, a, a phenomenal upgrade mm -hmm. um, in the last balance data sheet. And what it got is it got a points reduction. So they're only 180 points now, which is crazy. Time. Yeah, that they're like less than a, than a Redemptor seems. Yeah, seems it's insane. wild. So they're 180 points. And this is for like toughness 12, 16 wounds. The second thing that they got, and this is almost more important, uh, is now they can transport 14 models yeah. instead of 12. And that's one of its, I think its greatest advantages because you could put in one of those like uh, bigger, like an aggressors or a blade guard, one of those kind of larger six man squad units with the character and you still have enough space to fit in another one of those units as well if you want yeah. to. Or so like the you know, blade guard, five hell blasters and yeah, you know, and a full else. unit of blade guard with an ancient and a, and a, and a captain. Or a captain. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could you can fit a lot of stuff. Yeah. In or here. if you went the other route, you could fit six aggressors into it. And before you could put six aggressors inside of it, but no character because 12 was the max because aggressors all count as two. But now you can go six aggressors plus the biologists, yeah. right? And the biologists is it. so good. That's like everything. That's yeah. all it needed was to get those guys a little bit closer. Right, or, you know, six flamestorm aggressors plus the captain, mm -hmm. right? And so it has made a phenomenal little wave on my radar where I'm now looking at it and thinking, ooh, like, I think this could really go into some lists. What do you think its greatest downfall is? I, I think it's that it's armor three. I think that hurts this vehicle quite a bit. Even with armor contempt, you can sort of just chew at it and, and get a couple wounds through. But I feel like armor three is its biggest weakness. That and probably the size of it, which can also be part of its greatest strengths. I actually think that it's, uh, its greatest weakness is that it is effectively a gigantic rhino. Um, and uh, the problem here is that whilst it has a lot of output, it doesn't actually have the most reliable, like, killy output. Hmm. Um, and so, you know, a repulsor, when you see a big tank like that, 
you think to yourself, oh, like I could shoot this at a unit and kill the unit. No, not really. Now there's ways, there's ways, and we're gonna talk about that. There's ways to dial up the output of this thing to really get it like punching in its own weight class. Yeah, for sure. All of it's effectively AP zero if you don't go with the last cannon version. And even if you don't go with the last cannon version, it shoots, you know, two strength 10 last cannons and one strength 12 last cannon. Twin and linked. Twin linked. And then 18 AP nothings. And the uh, the hunter st hunter striker missile? Yeah, the, the hunter killer? slayer missile slayer. or whatever. You see it, one of those. Yeah. So it's, it's not incredible at anti-tank though no. it has that option if you want to tool into it a little bit if mm -hmm. your army is like sort of lacking that ability you can go that yeah. route but it is not it is not an anti-tank solution no it's never right? an anti -tank it, solution. It, it, however it does have a very cool rule and i actually used this uh, at play on uh, just the other day hmm. and it was phenomenal so it has a uh, emergency combat embarkation as a as its rule and what happens is if somebody charges a unit that's sitting around an impulsor it's got to be uh, within three inches of it if, we, if you charge a unit that's within three inches of the repulsor it can hop back inside now your opponent still gets to like retarget their charge right which I, it, it is a bit of a downfall but I, I get why it's like that it's a little, really unfair otherwise um but uh you get to hide a unit that doesn't usually probably want to get shot. So like it can move forward, deposit, you know, giant squad of Hellblasters, yeah. uh, a bunch of Stern Guard veterans. When you hop out, you do a bunch of damage. And if your opponent like tries to kick back and charge that unit, you know for sure that they're safe, mm -hmm. right? And then if they do that, it's almost like a big help, like, because then they're probably going to be an extra three inches away from the repulsor, makes their charge really long, right? In the following turn, the repulsor can just move away, get the dudes out somewhere else. Like, you could rapidly redeploy your units into places that, you know, really help you uh, be really effective on the tabletop. And and I think that it's a great rule that a lot of people really forget about, yeah. right? So it's a great rule. Make sure you tell your opponent that you have it. Um, but uh, it, you know, it, it just helps keep guys alive. It's phenomenal. How do we take this repulsor? It's got a, a very cool unit rule. Mm -hmm. It does have a bunch of guns, not particularly effective right now, but how do we take this repulsor? And how do we dial it right up? Well, uh, I think we have to go into the detachments. And the one that rings out for me is Firestorm. Firestorm, yeah. you get plus one strength if you're within 12 for your shooting attacks. And assault on all of its weapons. Which means it can get a little bit more aggressive with yeah. that sort of thing. Then you can give it some stratagems. You can pay one command point and give it plus one to wound if it's targeting a unit within six inches. This yeah. means that its defensive array goes to strength five with plus one to wound. Which means you're really hammering those like toughness four and even toughness five units. Yeah. It could actually really peel up some 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 decent infantry on that kind of a, yeah. a, a volley. Or I mean even if it's just a tank with armor three or something, you could just lay out a huge amount of firepower into it. Yeah, totally. And, and then and then tank shock it with toughness twelve. Yeah, which is great. So tank shots a tank shock is a phenomenal strategy to use with it. Just slam it into stuff. It also has OC five which is a great a great way to just snake an objective from somebody. Yeah, OC5 is insane. So I also like um, how you, you're you able to like burning vengeance so someone shoots the repulsor. The guys get out of the repulsor, shoot, which is phenomenal, mm -hmm. in your opponent's turn. And then if your opponent is going to charge the guys that just hopped out, they can <laughs> they can combat reembarkation like into the repulsor again. I just thought of something so stupid. You could have Infernus Marines inside. The Repulsor gets shot. They get out, flame something. Yeah. They get charged, overwatch, and get back in. Yeah. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> That's so silly. You could get so many shots out of that. That unit. is so ridiculous. Yeah. I like, it. It, phenomenal. Like, that. That those kind of things help die. Like, suddenly the, the Repulsor is like, oh, my goodness. Like, we have to stop it. It must be stopped, right? Because now it's just started cranking out a bunch of like out of sequence shooting, 
that and it is helping to facilitate that, right? Mm-hmm. And so that that all that credit goes to the repulsor because the Infernus Marines would need to be inside a transport for the stratagem to work, right? They would need to be sitting next to the repulsor to make sure that they're safe from the ensuing charge. It it really is like a phenomenal tactical tool. Yeah. We moving along from fire. So firestorm, I think, is our first place. Like I, I think, really, that's like kind of sits at the top. Yeah, I mean, they, they get a lot of transport bonuses, which is pretty they awesome. Do. But this is still a big bad tank, and nothing does big bad tanks like the Iron Storm. Like the Iron Storm. <laughs> yeah, the Iron Storm. So uh, what I like about the Iron Storm is is I think you do need to pair it with a Tech Marine mm-hmm. because then the Tech Marine can tag it. And give it, uh, make it so it hits on twos. So if you're taking the anti-tank version of this thing, right, it'll hit on twos with all of its LAS weapons, actually being able to connect, right? The detachment itself allows it to do some wound re-rolling and stuff like that. And it also allows it to do some damage re-rolling. So damage re-rolls. Right? That damage want. re-roll is huge. So you can take the the what would have been mediocre performance out of an anti-tank repulsor and actually get some very reliable shooting out of it. Mm-hmm. Additionally, something that you can do is let's say you went um, a more like uh, volume way with it. So let's say yours is kitted out with the Gatling cannon and the heavy bolters. You could use the target augury web and give it lethals. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it shoots what then? Uh, it, it would then shoot 33 times... Because it's 18 shots with the defensive array. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's 12 shots with the um, Gatling cannon. And then after that, it's three sustained twindling shots off of the heavy bolter. You could also combo that with the stratagem Mercy uh, Mercy is Weakness. Oh, yeah. To give it all sustained, right? Sustained on fives. Yes. And I'm pretty sure it triggers the lethals on fives, too. Yeah, it just says critical hits on fives. Oh, yeah. So that it would. So it would would be both lethals. 32 hitting on twos, lethals and sustained on fives. So then you go into the oath target and you just reroll everything. Everything that isn't a lethal. Yeah. yeah. And you just ice something with the repulsor. Yeah. And ice ice something with like small arms fire coming from the repulsor, which is awesome. Which is hilarious, right? You can get something very (laughs) similar uh, by playing Anvil Siege Force. Right, so all of its guns get heavy, so it ever sends stale, you're hitting on twos, mm-hmm. which is great. And then one CP, Battle Drill Recall, yes. gives it sustains, and if it's sat still, it triggers on the fives. So you get just lots of volume out of it, it's just wild. Yep. So you can get a ton of volume out of this thing, and if you combo it kind of in the right way, I think you can you can definitely get it punching above its weight, which is phenomenal. Even the like storm of fire stratagem from Gladius, yeah, giving it ignores cover, and if oh. you're in the right tactical doctrine, plus one AP, that yeah. puts those thirty two shots where they need to be. That's awesome. Yeah, that's phenomenal, yeah, right? That's so, crazy good. I mean, that one also is great because uh, if you choose devastator doctrine, it's going to be able to advance and shoot its weapons, so you know for sure it's going to have the target yeah. that it wants. And if it is running low on wounds. And you get all your guys out and you just want to suicide mission this thing into your opponent's deployment zone or in an area where you know it's going to do a lot of damage. You can Vengeful Animus and just auto blow it up. Yeah, that's in the Iron Storm. Iron Storm Vengeful Animus. So if you go, okay, it's like down to four wounds, but my opponent has like Terminators and a Land Raider and, you know, like some cultists. I charge it. one wound guy I couldn't kill. And And then a character and you just ram it into something yeah something Tank that shock. will kill it in combat yeah like purposely charge it with with the i want this thing to die in mind yeah totally and then just go boom and watch this thing do d6 and a huge aura yeah. and that could be after a tank shock too oh yeah so you like you slam in tank shot because it's toughness <clears> 12 <throat> you roll the 12 dice do a bunch of mortals they fight it back kill it and then you're like D6 mortals to everything within six. Like, you can actually do a lot of damage with that and and be really, really devastating. Just, like, throw repulsors at your opponent. Yeah, just watch them explode and each throw time repulsors. just pop them. And they're almost cheap <clears> enough <throat> to do silly things like that. For 180 points. Yeah. For I would, I would choose great. that model size and do D6 mortal wounds to all the things around it. Yeah. 
Like the other day, you had a battle wagon explode. I remember that. Let's not talk about that. Yeah, you had a battle wagon That's explode. That's a sore spot. Did so much stuff to your own guys. It's keeping me it awake. It killed like a kill a can. It killed like a bunch of storm boys. It killed a bunch. Of, so, you, but you can do that, but not to your own stuff, to your opponent's you try stuff. Try to make it to your opponent's Yeah, you try to make it to your opponent's stuff. Yeah. Uh, the Vanguard uh, detachment. Just making it always in cover and always minus one to hit oh, yeah. in the shooting phase. Because that helps it with a little bit of its durability yep. problems with the armor three. Uh, you got yeah. Space Wolves for the Sagas. You can just choose it to always have a feel no pain of six. Oh, which yeah. See, pretty silly now that it would it's, have that. But now you actually you feel safe kind of getting it up there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right? being able to like tango in the middle. If it moves up and it deposits like a bunch of Wolfguard or something like that, it'd be really gnarly. Or a bunch of like Wolfguard Terminators. Mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. you know what? You can actually fit like three Centurion Devastators plus another squad of dudes inside of it because each <laughs> of those is three. Right, and then and like, the, so yeah. you could be like, I move. And then ultimately. It's OC5. You just put it on objectives and people have to handle it. Yeah, you can just ram it onto, like, just smash it into somebody's objective. And it's a vehicle, so it can still shoot all its weapons. Yeah, and Toughness 12, like, you can catch even close combat armies off guard when you you go, I'm going to charge you with this. They go, oh, sweet, I'm a combat army. I wanted to be in combat. And then they go, oh, yeah, but it's Toughness 12. And they just... On sixes. Yeah, they and they sit there. It's a slap fight. Yeah, and then they have to try and like move away, and like, and you just chase them with this silly repulsor. Like, yeah. it it is one of those units where you need to like align your expectations for what it is actually for, mm-hmm. and how it is you're actually going to use it, right? Because it is not. It's it's bigger brother, the Repulsor Executioner. It is not that unit. It doesn't have that big angry laser on it. It doesn't have a macroplasma incinerator. Like it it is not that. What it is, but it's also 50 points cheaper, right? So use it like the cheap, you know, like box it is and start bumping into things, start being really agitating with it, protecting your guys. And uh, the more agitating you are with it, the more your opponent goes like, I got to kill this repulsor. And you're like, yeah, cool. It doesn't have any good guns on it anyways. And they're, was- <laughs> and they're wasting a ton of firepower to bring it down. Yeah, you exactly. typically need pretty good firepower. Totally. To and the combination of like armor of contempt and it also has smoke launchers. Oh, so like smoke. So you can be like minus one to hit cover out in the open armor of contempt. Good luck. Yeah. Right. So suddenly it's actually pretty durable. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I think I and I didn't see anywhere near enough of them. Like I went to Tacoma, huge West Coast tournament, didn't see anywhere near enough repulsors. And I was playing an executioner and there were so many people that were like, oh, you're playing a repulsor executioner. Well, that's kind of crazy. Cool. OK. And I was like, this is crazy. It doesn't feel crazy. And I but looking around, there's not enough of them. Yeah, I, I want to put a repulsor into my next list absolutely because i think you can get so much mileage out of it and uh yeah I, it is an underused unit for sure yeah and and it goes into that level stat check thing too like if you want to lean hard into a more vehicle heavy yeah this is perfect because it's low point cost yeah and way too tough for yeah. like the toughness 12 on it oh is yeah awesome yeah so then it kind of makes all your opponents anti-tank weapons turn towards around, it yeah. while your other tanks can scuttle around yeah totally so he, so I, I love that fact that it is it is a piece that your opponent will go this needs at least two anti-tank units to dedicate yeah. bringing it down which can keep yeah. your other stuff a lot and if you have two of them like two of them is only 360 points yeah which seems wild which it does seem wild and yeah. you can actually get a lot of really effective stuff to where you need it to be. Yeah. So, you know what? Start using some repulsors. Go tell us some repulsor stories. Have you ever had the like combat reembarkation thing go super well? Have you ever had a time when your opponent's been very frustrated with the fact that you still have this big metal box on the table? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for joining us today at Hyperspace Hobbies. I am, of course, Space Marine Steve. This is my good friend Ian, and we wish you a great rest of your day.